Hey, how's it going? This is 60% Cat, and I'm showing you some of my game that I'm working on. It's called uh, Observateur. It's a uh, um, uh, it's a mystery game. I think I think that's what I'm calling it, genre-wise. But it's not what you would think. Um, these 2D little silly kind of characters, I guess you would think. And um, so you play as a kind of like a fly on the wall, this little butterfly sprite fairy type of thing. And uh, you kind of roam around the town, seeing what's going on in this uh, town slash island kind of place. The setting is almost this kind of space slash magic place. Um, should be in the background. There should be the aether. The or they're in the layer of the orange, so it should be just kind of like flow slash bubbly energy, kind of floating around. Um, the town it's itself. It should be more barren, honestly, of, of this energy. And, uh, you know, Lily right now, she's heading towards a refinery, and I don't know why she shouldn't be doing that. Um, I know you can't really tell, but this is supposed to be a refinery right here. It's where they take in Aether energy and they they do something with it. Um, well, they package it and give it to other people. They also, and it's run by this dragon character named Charles. And he owns a few other things on the island as well. He's kind of an entrepreneur. And it's also run by these two little insect kids. Um, Nip and Nib is their uh, current working names. Um, they're just, they like to pretend, they like to play around, but they get down to business when it needs to. And they, uh, people should be surprised that uh, a real place is being run by kids while Charles is actually always asleep, this dragon. He, he never seems to wake up ever. Lily's now going to the south quarter here, and I don't know what she's doing here. Again, she's... It's almost like she's a mind of her own at this point. I, I didn't program her like this way. Um, here, we're going to the bar right here. Uh, I don't know why Sam's following Agatha like that. He shouldn't be. Um, Agatha, I got pretty well animated. Let's see her from the beginning. So, let's see her little path. I'm going to dash to the east end. La, fly. Fly away. Yes. In the center, there's going to be an upside-down isosceles pyramid, and it has uh, it has a magical spell on it. Yeah, there's magic. There's also uh, basically the electronics of this world are run by magic or the aether. So she's a little walking animation. Haha, <laughs> it's so tiny. It's almost nothing really. Um, the animation is going to be really really slim. I was debating on how hard to draw everything, how how, how hardcore to go, essentially. And uh, decided to do pretty minimal. Not as minimal as Frankie right here. He should be a lot more. I'm gonna be voicing Frankie. He's a cook in the kitchen. Yeah, he gets things done real quick. He's a uh, he's real down to business. No shit giggles with this fella. Um, but I'm also getting a lot of voice actors for other people. Uh, I really want a British girl, a sassy British girl for Agatha here. So right now she's just coming from her. She's a small ship that she parked on the east end, and. Uh, Sam should not be following her. I gotta... Let's uh, reprogram that, shall we? Let's fix that. So here, the, this is kind of the script stuff I have made. Um, just so you know, I'm making everything in JavaScript. It's an extension of Canvas, um, or and also like HTML. They call it HTML5 sometimes, because the latest version of HTML and all the JavaScript stuff. Um, just to... Just give you a little rundown. Just give you a little, a little idea of what's composed of. Even though it's quite a simple game, there's you know there's a few components in here. Um, I've got another page of resources. I'm using the physics engine of P2.js. Um, these are little locations. They're literally just an X and Y, like the barracks, the south route, and so the characters just go to these locations. Quite simple. I preload the images before you get going, and I preload the audio too. Um, knit, you, you know, start the physics world, get some heights, create a, your original character. They, uh, these little circles that fly from them, I call these Ogos, Observator Graphics Object. So I had to make my own little, like, little function about that. And, uh, let's look at that, huh? Can't really tell the circles, I can make it more pronounced. But little circles, yay! I originally wanted everybody to have like an aura and maybe from the like these circles and stuff and I experimented with a little bit with that I still might 
Yeah, yeah, you, you'll still be able to see the energy. Everybody has energy or aether flowing around. And it... And it matters. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so that's representative of that. Here we got... You see, the even, it was even called aura. I gave them a color for each of their auras as well. So they can still do that. Introduce the characters. They all have their graphics. They have two separate graphics. They have a face and then they have their body. Um, yeah, body expression, facial expression, and there's just two, this is just one image, two image. I'm really trying to make this really simple, really easy to make. It's trying not, you know, and like the script stuff. This is what we're really going to look at here. I don't want Sam to fall out here. We go, Sam, walk Agatha. See, I didn't know that would happen. He should, he should be close enough that he stops walking. That's really weird that he keeps following her. There's nothing else that he does to do that. That's really strange. I don't know why that would happen. Unless the radius of... Basically when they're walking towards somebody, it checks how far they are from them. It's actually, it should probably be distance. And if they're in within a certain amount of distance, and they're walking towards them, and they reach their destination, essentially, then it, it stops walking. It should remove that current um, command almost given to that character. Let's see. Um, this is a this is in render. So this is where it's graphically rendering stuff. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. I'll just take it off for now, I guess. For 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 video's sake, I suppose. My my quick key to get to uh, my. Uh, Script sexy. Sexy cat. Okay, now Sam's gonna stop following that chick, so we could properly uh, assess her, right? See the scene. Maybe we could. Uh... It's one of the proper scenes that's going on. So yeah, actually, you know how you're seeing text. It's not gonna be text. You're not gonna have text. This is an all audio dialogue game. There's lots and lots of dialogue to record. I already have uh, a few voice actors and actresses available right now. Um, you can see one of them in, on my YouTube. You can see a little bit of uh, of, of Rasp Deer. She's voicing Lily. Um, really would want somebody, um, a British sassy girl to do Agatha here. She's the general manager to the restaurant. I'm voicing Frank here. He's a sassy fella in the kitchen. He's getting things done, but he doesn't like how things are run. He's very, he's very much like come from comes from me, I guess you could say. Um, this is Joyce. She's she's a very important character. She uh, she's a bunny. She lives in the apartments up here. She plays games. She has two jobs. She works in the restaurant in the daytime, and then at nighttime she works in the bar right over here, which is where Agatha's coming in. My God, Doris, you not believe? Oh dear, sweetie, what happened? I woke up with such a headache. And I was having such a nice dream. And I woke up to my fucking alarm. I just can't cope today, Doris. You know exactly what I need. <laughs> I know it's exactly what you want, sweetheart. Great, now make it a double, please. Um, I don't think there... Now don't even think about starting that. I'm in control of my life, woman. Now give me a goddamn cocktail. Yes, of course. <laughs> so, as you can see from there, Agatha pretty much forced Lady Doris to give her a cocktail. And it's the morning, by the way. It's the very morning. And she's about to start her shift. She should be at the restaurant already, but she's getting a cocktail right now. So she'll bring that cocktail into the restaurant where Joyce, she's not there yet because I haven't finished updating the location. She'll be coming in to her sh first shift. Frankie's already in the kitchen prepping. He's waiting for his order coming from the freighter ship that's uh, in here, right here, where Lily's arriving. There's also gonna be these supplies here. Supplies right here that Benjamin's gonna be sh shipping receiving. He's gonna be bringing that in, bringing that out. After that, he's gotta go to the refinery to get some fuel to refuel the freighter. And then, so obviously you can see there's a lot of like, just it's a tapestry of, of interactions. So, if you were to mess with that tapestry, oh, what would happen? What would happen indeed? These guys have a routine. They have their way of life. 
it's very corrupted it's very uh just not in the best interest of maybe everybody but maybe it's because they're isolated on this island maybe it's because a guy who owns a lot of the stuff is asleep all day maybe it's because the federation is this kind of domineering force is kind of it's almost like a gang mafia on this island as well who knows <laughs> oh, wouldn't you like to know well soon maybe you could play it and find out thanks for watching here i hope that was enjoyable thanks for uh participating getting a little little observation of observateur